Hi everyone and thank you for joining us again. In the last video we started to create dynamic hair for, for a software render. Uh, uh, we had a lot of requests to also do um, hair that you can use for uh, a hardware render. So in this video we'll start creating polygonal hair for games and continue with the other hair in the next video. Uh, I received an email from Connor Horton requesting me to create uh, poly hair in this particular style. If I drag it over. Uh, so that's what we're going to attempt today. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to finish it, but we'll see how far we get. Uh, if anyone else has a special request, please feel free to leave a comment below or send me an email and I'll try my best to accommodate you. Okay, now we're in Maya and what I've seen from a lot of the comments is that uh, people are struggling with the textures of creating poly hair. And one big mistake that everybody makes is that textures aren't just something to consider after the fact. It's something that you need to consider throughout the entire modeling process of making the hair. So we're going to go through it uh, step by step, even though there's another video that, I, uh, that I've also created that um, regards the same um, principle of creating hair. Uh, but I'm going to go through it step by step with textures in mind all the way. So the first thing we need to do is create a strand of hair that we can instance and what I mean about that uh, with that is that we can create one strand of hair that we can duplicate over and over and over again uh, to populate the entire scalp of the head so first thing we do is create a polyplane just a normal plane and we set the divisions to two so it's just a square plane with two divisions. Okay, we delete the history and I'm going to snap the pivot to its base. I'm going to duplicate it and in the Z ax I'm going to snap it right to the end. So it's two, uh, two planes end on end and they are flush together. And I'm going to duplicate that second one again and snap it to that end. So now we have three uh, poly planes that are square. The last one, I'm going to select the edges and extrude it, uh, keeping in mind to turn this keep faces together on, otherwise we're going to have two separate faces that is going to be extruded. And I'm just going to extrude it a value of 1 so it's equal to uh, to our start square and we can set the divisions to 2 again so it's kind of like a just a double of the first one okay now we need to delete everyone's history and this one well, let's start here this long uh, plane is going to be our start. So let's call it start. This one is going to be the middle and this one is going to be the end. Now we can select all three, go into component mode, select vertices, select the middle and move it up slightly just so we can get a nice bend. It's important to do it with all three at the same time so that the the seams here are flush together. Uh, if it's not flush you're gonna have some issue stitching it together. Now what we need to do we have got a lot of um, transformation here so we select everything and just freeze the transformation so that everything is back to zero. Uh, now this might be a good starting point for us, but what I want to do is just select these. I'm going to bring this one down a bit and just create a slight bend at the, 
beginning. Just, just so that we have a nice curve going out. Okay. Now here's where the texture part comes in. Uh, this first piece of geometry, uh, we're, we're going to export this into ZBrush, by the way, and create our own custom custom brush to to uh, draw on the actual model. Uh, this first part is going to be instanced as the start of your curve. The second part is going to be the middle part, and it's going to be duplicated depending on how long the curve is. And this end part is going to be just the end cap of the curve. So what we need to do is in our UV editor you can see that our UVs are laid out in a square the same for the middle and the same for the end. So what we need to do is for the start uh, piece we just create a planar map. Oh. I need to select the faces and create a planar map so we can see it's one, two, three, four faces and the other two are automatically UV'd for us. So it's the end, the middle and the start. Uh, you only need to do that for the start piece since we've extruded additional faces into it. Uh, we're not going to bother with uh, UVing this entire piece because this middle piece is going to be instanced depending on the length of the curve. So we're not going to bother with that. Uh, I'll show you at the end how to handle the UVs for that. So selecting all three objects, we're just going to go File and Export. Okay, uh, after exporting the three pieces as an OBJ, uh, we import it into ZBrush. And as you can see, we have our three pieces. And all I'm going to do, just for ease of visualization, I'm just going to turn the display properties to double so we can see the back side of it. Okay, um, holding Shift, you can snap your view. So we want to look at it this way, just frame it, and go to polygroups and say O2 groups. And we can see this is our start piece, our middle piece, and our end piece. And with that, let's go to uh, brush, I'm sorry, let's brush, and uh, brush, create insert mesh. And it's going to ask us this prompt we know, we're just going to say create a new brush. Okay, so now we have this brush. The problem is it only drags like this. So what we need to do is change some of its settings. So under stroke, curve, we turn on curve mode. And... Uh, Let's turn on the lock start and the lock end. Now we have a curve that draws our start and instances the middle until it gets to the end. But that doesn't look very nice because we can clearly see that it's separate geometry. We can fix that though by going into brush, modifiers, we can turn on make sure this uh, triparts is turned on uh, which it, I think by default it is and turn on weld points uh, we can turn on the stretch and we can play around with the overlap but for now I'm gonna leave that blank and I'm just gonna turn up this uh, curve resolution so let's see what that looks like that looks more like the curve that we want now we can increase our brush size and it's going to give us a larger stroke but also the steps are going to decrease the bigger the brush gets. So if we have a really big brush you can see the steps are not really dynamic. So 
keep that in mind that the width of the object that you're creating depends on uh, the width of uh, the stroke that you're going to get. So it's not a matter of just creating the brush and then um, tweaking the, the, the width of your brush because you're going to lose uh, steps. Okay, now with um, our hair curve created, you can see we can draw right on the mesh and create our strips of hair that we want. Uh, now, when I spoke about the steps, you'll see as I increase, increase the size of my brush, I get less and less steps. So that's something that you need to keep in mind that if you're working with thin strips it's very easy to control but the larger the brush gets the less steps you're going to get so that's just something to to keep in mind when when you're working uh, a workaround that might be to work with a thin strip just move out of the without clicking just move away from the curve increase the brush size and just a single click well, just a single click, let me see if I can do that with the mouse, just a single click will increase the size of the, of the mesh um, and still keep the steps. But as you'll see, the, the offset of the start and the end won't match. Um, but before we get there, first thing we need is to grab our mask tool and mask out the area where we want to create the hair and in polygroups we're gonna group masked you can see we've got two let's just uh, group them all. yeah that's a better color you can see we've got these two two colors, two polygroups. So this is what we're going to start working on. Okay, so let's mask everything out. And I need to turn on this double again, just to see. Now with this mask, I'm going to go to Subtools and Extract. Let's see what this gets us go a little bit thicker, thicker, it's a bit too much, yeah, seems good, okay, now we've got two separate meshes, and let's turn on DynaMesh, And for now, I'm just going to smooth this out. Let's see. Oh, I'm still on the wrong brush. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Okay, something weird happened to uh, ZBrush, but we're back now. Um, Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just start to sculpt a base mesh from this. we see we've got this clump right at the top and the rest of the hair is pretty much flush to the to the skull so let's start smoothing this part out maybe move this down a bit move this out start smoothing Let's 
build this up. Okay, and to save some time, I'm going to time lapse through this. And I'll see you when this base sculpt is finished. there to capture all the detail. Uh, I'm just trying to create something that has volume and uh, the details I've added here is just kind of notes for myself uh, for the direction of the hair flow. I model it slightly smaller because once we add the hair on top of this we're going to capture all of that volume and if you model this too large uh, and you add on top of that then uh, your, your, the volume of the hair is going to be way off. So first thing we do, we load that brush we created and what we want to do is actually create something that covers uh, the, the scalp underneath. So I'm going to turn on transparency and so we can look through it and what you might want to do is turn off this double, well it's not going to help us much. Okay, and um, I'm going to turn on symmetry for now and all we want to do is uh, create the hair on top of our, of our model not the hair so just f following the flow of the hair let's start creating these strips now the initial strips I'm creating relatively large to cover as much area as I can Okay, now that we have covered most of, this, uh, of the scalp of the character, uh, we need to separate this from this subtool. So if we look at our character, this is now part of the, of the subtool. So what we need to do is go into polygroups, take this away, let's just turn that off so that we only look at the hair and uh, under polygroups group visible so 
everything is now in one uh, polygroup. And then we simply go to split and group split. Now the hair is, or those those strands that we created, is now on one uh, separate sub uh, sub tool. Uh, we're going to create uh, separate sub uh, polygroups for the different types of hair that we're going to create, and that's just going to uh, make it easier when we get to texturing, uh, because this is going to be a texture that's going to fill the uh, fill the scalp, so that we don't see through the hair on, uh, onto the head. Um, and I'm seeing here uh, once you get into uh, the polygroups, you can clearly see some of the bald spots. So either you can use the move tool, or we can just quickly go back and insert mesh and just fill up the areas that, that still need some covering. And again, we need to separate these two. So all we need to do is group split. And this one, we just merge down. And just to make sure, we can go into polygroups and uh, group visible. Okay. So that's one layer of the hair. Our next layer is going to be on top of our actual hair sculpt. So I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush. And we just go through the process again. directly on top of the model and one that's slightly above that creates the volume. Now I'm keeping these two uh, on different polygroups because they're going to get two different uh, sets of textures. Um, one thing that we need to do probably is just use the move tool and 
gently push these into the head. We don't need to be exact, but depending on the texture it might leave a, a seam or an artifact or something. is to create the, uh, let's say, the finer hairs that come off the, the main group of hair. So let's grab this brush again, and I'm going to make it a bit smaller. So let's start drawing. I still have symmetry on. And I'm doing it on the wrong model. Let's see, this one. separate the groups and merge down So that's what we have so far. Three different groups, so three different texture areas. Um, one thing to note is that I'm keeping my brush relatively large uh, because we can add um, really fine details in the texture maps with a large map as opposed to something that's really small and um, then you kind of lose all of the texture detail. Okay, I see we're already at about 30 minutes. Um, in the next video I'm going to continue with the braid on top. So uh, please subscribe so that you can follow along um, and thank you for watching.